Claim of China as its national boundaries. The Philippines loses about 80% of its EEZ facing the West Philippine Sea, including the entire Red Bank and part of Malampaya, Malaysia. Malaysia loses about 80% of its EEZ in Sabah and Sarawak facing the South China Sea, as well as most of the active gas and oil fields in the same area. These are the active gas and oil fields that have powered the economic development of Malaysia, and they are encroached by the Nine Dust Lines. Vietnam loses about 50% of its total EZ, Brunei about 90%, Indonesia 30% of its EZ facing the South China Sea in the Natuna Islands, whose surrounding waters comprise the largest gas field in Southeast Asia, the second largest in the world. China wants a piece of that action in Natuna Island. So what happens now? The Philippines will be left with a sliver of water as territorial sea and EZ. This is what will be left with us. From Balabang Island to Yamin Island, our northernmost island in the Batanes is Yamin Island. Our southernmost island in Palawan is Balabang. That's 1,300 kilometers long. We share a common border with China. That's the border according to China. Every time our navy ship crosses that line, they enter into Chinese territory. So from Balabang Island, the Nidas Line is just 64 kilometers, Burgos Town about 70 kilometers, and Yaming Island about 44 kilometers. What does it mean to have a common sea border with China that's very long, 1,300 kilometers long at least? You ask the Vietnamese, they have a long land border with China. And to remain sovereign and independent, they have to fight China for centuries. The moment they slacken their guard, they become a province of China, which happened in the past, or they become a satellite of China. That's why with a smaller GDP than the Philippines, China, uh, Vietnam has acquired submarines, six kilo-class submarines, fighter jets, uh, anti-ship missiles, because they know it's an existentialist threat. Is this an ex existentialist threat? We have to find out. Now, under UNCLOS, what are the maritime zones? This is the territorial sea. From the low water mark, you measure 12 nautical miles. That's called territorial sea because it's like territorial land. There is, that belongs to the state, complete sovereignty except the right of innocent passage. From the edge of the territorial sea, you measure 188 nautical miles. That's the exclusive economic zone. It is called exclusive because the Coastal state has exclusive right to exploit economically the zone. All the natural resources, living and non-living, belongs to the coastal state. Exclusive economic zone means the coastal state has exclusive right to exploit the zone economically. From the edge of the EUSA, you measure 150 nautical miles. That's the extended continental shelf. If there is a natural prolongation, of the extended continental shelf here. There is no break, like a deep trench here. Then the state is entitled to an additional 150. If there's a break here, there's a trench, then the state can claim only up to here as its extended continental shelf. Now, these are the high seas here, from here, from the edge of the EZA. All the fish here belong to mankind. The mineral resources here belong to the coastal state, and this, the mineral resources here belong to the common heritage of mankind. This is administered, the mineral resources here uh, are administered by the International Seabed Authority, an authority created under UNCLOS. If you want to explore this, a state wants to explore it, they have to apply with this International Seabed Authority. The authority has issued 37 permits to explore the seabed, Four permits have gone to China, the highest number of, for any state. So those are the maritime zones. And under UNCLOS, because of the geology of the South China Sea, the maximum that a coastal state can claim is 350 nautical miles. No state 
coastal state in the South China Sea can claim beyond that because of the geology. So that's it. China is claiming much, much more than that, 950 nautical miles. Now, what is a low tide elevation? A very important concept. It's a low tide elevation must be naturally formed. Area of land, it can be rock. Surrounded by water, above water at low tide, so you can see it at low tide, but submerged at high tide, at high tide you cannot see it. What is the legal significance of that? It is part of the submerged continental shelf. It is not land. A low tide elevation it is not land, it is not territory, it has no territorial sea, it has no territorial airspace. But LT beyond the territorial sea is not subject to appropriation by any state. It cannot be owned. But if it's within your EEZA, then you can exploit it. Sovereign rights to exploit the natural resources. Now, this is a low tide elevation. This is a rock above water at high tide. This is an island. Why? Because at high tide, you cannot see this anymore. So there is no, this one has no territorial sea. This one is a 12 nautical mile territorial sea because above water at high tide. This is an island. Of course, it has a territorial sea of 12 nautical miles. If it is capable of human habitation or economic life of its own, then it's entitled to 200 nautical mile EEC. If there is a natural prolongation of its extended concept, it's entitled to an additional 150 nautical miles. So those are the concepts. Here, this is an issue in the arbitration because we're saying Ito Aba, while it is an above water at high tide, it's uh, an island. It is not capable of human habitation, so because it does not fresh water. Now, let's go to China's island building in this practice. China occupies seven reefs, and it is building islands, creating islands on all seven reefs. But to create those islands, China had to dredge 10 other reefs. So China actually has destroyed 17 reefs in this practice. China said the primary purpose of our island building is to provide search and rescue services to all countries, disaster prevention, we want better service to vessels from China and her neighbors, other countries, including the Philippines. We tell China, no, please don't do that. These are the islands of China in the Sprat list, and they, China has built on this, uh, all these islands. Now, that's, let's go to those uh, seven reefs. Fire Cross Reef, before the island building, it's just a rock above water high tide, maybe about one meter. That's it. China has reclaimed, it has now 274 hectares. Now, in 1987, UNESCO was undertaking a global survey of the oceans, and China said, we will put up a radar station here for UNESCO, a weather station so that you can use it for your global survey. Of course, UNESCO agreed. So they signed an agreement. So China put up a weather station there, radar station. That radar station now is a military air and naval base of China. Before China did the reclamation here in Pilot Cross Reef, the, the Chinese State Shipping Corporation uploaded this in its website and said, this is what we will do with Pilot Cross Reef. It's uh, 274 hectare reclamation, three kilometer runway, hangars, and if you look at this, this is the swept wing strategic bomber of China, the A6K. There are windmills here, a wire four ships, and China reclaimed. So let's see what happened. In uh, June 2015, China published this photo. We have finished the reclamation, here it is. You compare it to the plan, it's almost the same. The only difference is this, they transferred it here. Now, Admiral Harris, the U.S. Pacific commander, said a 3,000 runway is large enough to take a B-52, almost large enough for the space shuttle, and 3,000 feet longer than what you need to take off on a Boeing 747. It's very long. It's a military-grade runway, and uh, Admiral Harris said, China is building hangars for fighter jets here. That's the H-6K. It's armed with cruise missiles, conventionally armed or nuclear armed. And this can, this is the range of 7,000 kilometers. 
combat range is half of that. It can fly towards Australia and release its cruise missiles, which have a range of 2,200. 1,000 kilometers before reaching Australia, it can release its cruise missiles and turn back. The cruise missiles are satellite guided, and all U.S. military installations in northern Australia are within range of those cruise missiles. China tested the runway in Fire Cross Reef. Very good. So it's now operational as an air base. Johnson South Reef, before the island building, it's a low tide elevation within our EEZ. As of December 26, you can see here, radar domes, tower, buildings. In 1988, the Vietnamese used to occupy this, and the Chinese forcibly ejected the Vietnamese from this area. 77 Vietnam sailors died in that skirmish, 1988. And China reclaimed it, it's here now. Makinan Reef, before the island building, it's a low tide elevation within our EZ. That's how it looked like, May 5. Again, we have tall buildings, towers. As of 2015 November, China has retained 7.2 hectares out of a low tide elevation. That's Gaven Reef, the original structure is in. It's outside our EZ, but within our extended continental shelf. That's how it looked like, May. Tall buildings again, four to six stories high. 13.6 hectares now reclaimed by China. Quarteron Reef is just a rock above water at high tide outside our EZ, but within our extended corner shelf. That's how it looked like. Quarteron Reef, January 21. Now, this appeared in the newspapers uh, today and the other day because these are radar sites. The radar here can monitor all aircraft, any aircraft flying in Palawan. When an aircraft lands in Palawan or takes off in Palawan, it can be monitored by this uh, radar facility here. That's the radar facility of China. Very important because China, we put up at ADs in the South China Sea. I will discuss that later. That's the model reef. Very important reef for us because this is very close to Pagasa, just outside the territory sea, 12.2 nautical miles from Pagasa, the largest island. This is the Maori reef before the island building, totally submerged, part of the high seas. Now, this is uh, 500 nautical miles from Hainan, very far. That's how it looked like December 23, 2015. You can see the runway here, the dredgers, it's now reclaimed with land. That's a blow up of the runway as of December. And as of December 23, China has reclaimed 500 hectares. This is the entry and exit. So this is the harbor for warships and submarines. Before the reclamation, this was 22 meters deep. That's deep already. And with the dredging, it's even deeper, so ideal for a harbor. So this is a naval base with a runway. Fire Cross Reef is an air base with a harbor. Now, Article 88 of UNCLOS states, the high seas shall be reserved for peaceful purposes. In other words, you cannot build a military facility in the high seas. China just ignored that and built here an air, air a naval base in Zamora Reef. Mischief Reef, before the reclamation, at the start of the reclamation, now, China plans to reclaim 800 hectares out of a submerged area. It's totally submerged at high tide. China now, today, has, as of uh, November 2015, China has reclaimed 590 hectares. How big is that? San Juan City is just 594 hectares. So it's as big as San Juan City. What will China do with that? It's an air base and a naval base, and China can garrison thousands of marines. The Chinese analysts call Mr. Frith the Pearl Harbor of China in the South China Sea because it will be an air base, naval base, and they, have, they can garrison thousands of troops there. Now, this, this is the worry of our naval commanders. Why? Because 
Well, that's the airstrip, the development. Here you have a housing infrastructure, parade grounds, the docking facilities as of January 8th. Why is it a problem? This Palawan, the islands that we hold are here, that is in between. So if there's an air and naval base with thousands of Marines of Chinese garrison there, we will have a hard time resupplying our islands here. We will be forced to abandon those islands, and that is what China has been doing with respect to Ayungin Shore. Ayungin Shore is just 20 nautical miles, and this is the brave DRP Sierra Madre, dilapidated but manned by about a dozen Philippine soldiers being around here, Chinese Coast Guard vessels circling uh, 24 hours a day, like vultures circling uh, a dying uh, bird. So here, we can resupply this today because the, of the shallow waters of Ayungin Shoal. We use a small watercraft. The Coast Guard vessel of China cannot navigate in shallow waters, so we, we can resupply. But the moment mischief rate becomes operation as a naval base, then they will have small crafts to stop the resupply. And that is a big worry. Because mischief free to the Union Shoal are the gateway to read back. If you control this, you <coughs> control read back. And read back is our gas reserve. We will run out of gas in Malampaya in 10 years. We'll have rotating brownouts here unless we import them. We have we have to pay higher for those uh, imported LPG. Because you have, to, you have new facilities, you have to store them. So it's a big problem. Now, the island building of China, of course, violates the Declaration of Conduct. In 2002, ASEAN and China signed the Declaration of Conduct, which states the parties undertake to exercise self-restraint, refrain from any action of inhabiting on presently uninhabited islands, which showcase other features. China just ignored. China signed up, but they ignored it. And China said, the key to stability, peace and stability in the South China Sea is for parties to strictly adhere to the Declaration of Conduct. China is the first to violate it. Now, China has already an existing air base in the South China Sea, in the Paracels, Woody Island. That's the largest island in the Paracels, about 213 hectares. It has now a three kilometer runway. China just extended from 2,700 to 3,000 meter. And you read in the papers, China just installed a missile battery, two missile batteries in uh, uh, Woody Island, the HQ-9 anti-aircraft missile, which have a range of 200 kilometers. That means it has an anti-access zone of 103,000 square kilometers around Woody Island. Any aircraft entering within 103,000 square kilometers of Woody Island is, can be the target of this anti-ship missile. This is Chinese version of the uh, uh, Russian Sam 300. Now, that, this one is in the Amphitite group on the right side of the parasol. So on the left side, China is building this uh, helicopter base in Duncan Island. Why? Because Vietnam, as I said, bought six kilo plus uh, submarines from Russia. And this will become the anti-warfare submarine base of China, helicopter base. So everybody's getting up. Now, with an air base here and a helicopter base there, China has one, okay? That's a air base in Woody Island. China is building three here in this spot list. And my assessment is China will reclaim Scarborough Shoal and build an air and naval base here. So it will have three air bases, a triangle of air bases. It will now enforce an ADIS, Air Defense ID Zone in the South China Sea. Why does it need ADIS? Because Hainan is the home port of the Chinese nuclear submarines, nuclear armed submarines. Those submarines carry nuclear warhead, but they, if they fire the missiles here in the South China Sea, it will not reach continental USA. The missiles have a range of only 7,500 kilometers, so the submarines have to transit through the Pacific Channel, fire their missiles in mid-Pacific to hit 
the entire continental USA. So this is very important for China, Basi Channel. That's why I think China will build a clear naval base here in Scarborough Shoal to protect its only outlet to the mid-Pacific. The, the submarines here can only go through here. If they go through the Strait of Taiwan, on the other side, the Japanese Suyu class submarines will wait for them. They cannot get through them without being destroyed. So here, they need, so to get out of the passage channel without being destroyed, they put up an air and naval base in Scarborough Shoal. That's why they seized Scarborough Shoal. In the same way that in 1995, they seized Mischief Reef. We said, what will China do with Mischief Reef? It's a submerged area. Very strategic thinking, because they knew we we'll put up an air and naval base. That's why they seized Scarborough Shoal in 2012. They put up an air and naval base to enforce the nine dash lines as China's national boundaries. Now, last June 2013, China conducted sea and air drills in the Basin Channel for the first time. And China said, we will conduct in the future regular air and sea military drills in the Basin Channel. They have to protect the Basin Channel.